All right, so in this lightning round, we want to share a little bit about how we have built and continue to build on a professional learning system. But we like to start with who we are, because who we are forms the basis, right, of what we do. So uh, our mission, our vision, I won't read it, but we're an organization that was founded on the west side of Chicago in 1976 by parents. We are still on the west side of Chicago, right, um, on the north side of Chicago, and across 27 communities. Um, 21 was a really exciting year for us. After 20 years as a Head Start, early Head Start, state-funded uh, delegate of a city, we threw our hat in the ring and became a Head Start grantee. We got two Head Start awards in one year, one early Head Start expansion and another as a result of a DRS. So we've grown exponentially, right? And so we went from this organization in 1976, serving 75 youth, to now serving um, 2,500 children as zero, right, to five, and about 500 youth up to the age 17. Do you want to go to the next slide? And so, our organizational theory of change really came from our staff, right? And it basically operationalizes our mission. So I'm going to talk about some key things that link to our professional learning system. So we've committed, right, to building the skills and expertise of our staff. And we don't have a lot of time with you today, but something that we say all the time is that we don't do performative, right? If it doesn't have impact, you're wasting your time. And the only way, right, you serve children deeply is by serving those who serve them. And so this is our North Star. It is what we are doing every single day, right? So building the skills and expertise of our staff, and we're doing that through increased use of data and evaluation. Over the last two years, we've committed to building the infrastructure, the internal infrastructure, right? We don't act on our children and families and we don't want to be acted upon. So in two years, we've got a team of 25 internal, internal class reviewers or assessors, right? Two um, individuals who are affiliate trainers. Now you heard earlier, I said, Head Start, <laughs> early Head Start, state funding, 90% of our funding is from public sources, but it's all in the program design. Because your budget, right, it's a mission and a commitment to your commu community, right? It's a social contract. And so our professional learning system really speaks to that. And now I'm gonna hand it to Ashley to walk you through that system. So hi everyone. Um, as Sonia mentioned, we have really been building a professional learning system that creates an ecosystem of support for our teachers the same way that we want an ecosystem of support for children in the classroom. So what does that mean? It means that we have to take all of those adult learning best practices and we need to synthesize them in such a way that they're getting those um, services of support in a way that feels cohesive. What that means for us is that we have our directors who are providing reflective supervision. We have collaborative team planning time that's baked into schedules for our teachers. We have professional learning communities, professional learning communities facilitated by Alan Rosales um, for all of our educators, both lead teachers and assistant teachers, as well as our Grow Your Own teacher aides. And that learning track that they're on, those professional learning communities occur in the evening and they're aligned to our data and we do uh, make sure that our staff are paid for their time. So they receive, uh, they, they receive dollars to attend the professional learning and they happen six months out of the year. So they get six months off where they're not committed to that time, but six months they are in that learning and <clears throat> it's also aligned to their professional goals, which is really important because those goals consider two things um, when it comes to data. It considers child uh, outcome data. So for us, that means teaching strategies gold, where the children are doing, how they're doing. And we know that unfortunately, chronically, 
the areas of STEM and literacy are where children need the most support, and that we also are looking at class data. All of our teachers, all 79 of those educators I mentioned earlier, and the 25 plus uh, teacher uh, um, aides, are getting class uh, assessments in the spring and in the fall. And when we think about how to synthesize that, earlier today in the, uh, what, in the first keynote, um, they were talking about, there was that video clip and it said that class is the how. Well, what we believe is that the how needs to be really connected to the what, to the content areas, and to really thinking about how do we put that back on the educator so they're not, we're not just telling them, oh, go do this clothing studies and make sure you're you know, asking all the questions and considering class while you're doing it. Because that feels really confusing, we know, as a teacher, when you have all those different things coming at you. Now we're talking about TSG. Now we're talking about class. Now we're talking about ERS. So how do you do those things in a way that makes a lot of sense to the teacher and asks them to be really thinking about what we call the cognitive load is on them, just like we want it to be on the children. So, I'm going to turn it over to Alan, who's going to really bring that to life for us and talk about what that looks like within our professional learning community settings. Thank you, Ashley. All right, so let's pretend that you're all going to be a part of our professional learning community, okay? Um, the first thing we're going to do is introduce uh, to you is the big ideas of engineering, because one of our PLCs is a STEM PLC and we include infant, toddler, and preschool teachers, right? And how often do you hear STEM with an infant? Not really, right? Or even STEM with a toddler, maybe with a preschooler, but with a baby? Hmm, okay. Um, and so with engineering, the big idea is about structure and function, right? If you look at this room, it's a structure, right? And then there's functional things within the structure, right? And so one example, we had um, some kids build the Willis Tower, which is like, you know, Willis Tower, Sears Tower in the past, <laughs> uh, with Legos. And it's beautiful, three feet tall, very detailed, and so forth, right? But how do we create a pipeline where the babies are introduced to the same concepts that will, will be a pipeline of that, those concepts and learning over time, right? And so with the babies, um, if you give them a block and that's all they can hold, the teachers are being trained to use class language and class inquiry or concept development or um, expansion of cognition to have them say, hey, feel, this is the side, this is the top, this is the width, right? As soon as those babies start uh, becoming um, uh, mobile, uh, it gets more sophisticated. So now you take these blocks and usually they stack up, right? But you guide the, the, the babies or the infants, toddlers to start um, building to the side and then building the perimeter and then building the uh, square area, the le next levels, and then it becomes really sophisticated, right? And so what we've done over the past two years is now we're starting to see that happening where the babies are doing it. They're being engineers, right, with the right materials. And now the toddler teachers are receiving the infants that are already trained and have these concepts. Now they can use toddler class <laughs> strategies, right? Language and all um, to, to scaffold. And now the, pre and then the preschool teachers now are receiving these well-trained children that have um, experience building, that have experience exploring and investigating and playing, right? So that's like the big idea. Now go back one. <laughs> Um, so developing an inquiry-based approach is one of the things that we focus a lot on in PLCs, is we look at what's our teaching approach, uh, the content that we use, um, the style, and so those are things that are, are, are more ex explicit. Like, do you, do you have a, um, a teacher-directed approach, a teacher-guided approach, or a child-centered approach, right? And when we use those questions, um, then we bring in the, le the class lens tool and say, okay, these kinds of questions align to this concept development strategy here, or dimension, or indicator, and so forth. And so throughout the 12 sessions that we, we have for the teachers, 
we're having those conversations about STEM through a class lens. They get to implement um, the, the materials that we buy for them. They come back, we talk about it. They go back into the field, into the classroom, build again, and so it's like the scaffolding of uh, class um, information, scaffolding of STEM or anti-bias literacy information. Okay, next one. And then um, we videotape the teachers on a monthly basis. So every teacher gets videotaped. We bought uh, swivels. I don't know if you guys have, know about swivels. We bought a bunch of swivels for every center. And so they're able to self-record themselves. And we use those um, for a, a, few, a few, actually, for these and, and a few other um, reasons. One is to say, um, show us the lesson plan. And whatever the video is, it should reflect the lesson plan. That's really important, because we're not trying to just capture anything. We're trying to be very specific, right? And so your video should reflect your lesson plan. The second one is coding. So this is really cool, because I love the class, but it's formal, right? And I love formal, and I also love informal, right? And so um, some of the coaches and myself will transcribe all the questions that the teachers asked during the 10 to 15 minute video. All the questions that they asked are lined up in a line, and then we code them, each one of them, to say, was it a, what's the teaching approach for each question? Was it teacher-directed, teacher-guided, child-centered, right? Um, was it closed-ended or open-ended? Was it a STEM question or was it a social question or was it something else, right? Uh, and then we have the teachers do that themselves. They code their own questions and then we chart it because as soon as you code all the questions, then you can, you can chart it on, on some sort of a system like Excel or something, you graph it. And then the teachers can see their own development. And what's cool about that is um, with class, we have professionals that come in, assess you, give you some numbers. But with this, it's the teacher going through that process. They're analyzing their own practice. They're modifying their own practice. And that's what expert teachers do is self-analyzation, self-modification, and self-transformation. Right? That's what we want teachers to get to the point where they can transform their own practice. And then we also use videos for coaching. So we have coaching cycles, um, those, those videos that we take. The coaches um, watch them, they watch it with, with the teachers, and then they have in-depth conversations about the student work and also about the teacher work. Um, and so we have a quick video that we want to show you and some toddlers working on some engineering things here. I like. Yeah, Let's see which one you can go. Because you're making it stronger. I like. Excuse me, Kelsey. Sorry. Wait a minute. Wait a moment. Watch your face. Nice. What are you trying to do? This was a study on bridges. bridges. <laughs> so can I help you a little bit? How, well, actually, what can you do so that it stretches straight across? We got to give you some tape so you can tape it so it don't oh, fall. Oh, this is another way of thinking. He's putting the, now the tape on you know, the tape for me. You don't know how many? <laughs> I'm going to try it now. Let's see if it's strong yeah, enough. Woo! Your face, James! You got it to be strong and the bridge not to collapse. I love it. And so what's interesting is we bought them some fancy schmancy materials, right? Because the first six uh, sessions were about uh, a, a study on a bridge. And then the next study was on a, uh, a structure, a house. And they decided to use these materials, right? And what's really cool is... Um, the strategies that they used. The teachers didn't give them those strategies, right? One child uh, put uh, some tape over popsicle sticks because he thought maybe this will reinforce the bridge, right? And then the other one put tape across. And so each one of them had their own idea, right? And that's all class, right? From class training, from asking the teachers, look, let them explore. Let them be the ones that the cognitive activity is all on the child's side, right? And we're just there to guide them. And so this is just one example. The other one is anti-bias literacy, which would take another, uh, another 10 minutes to explain. But um, I'll pass it over to Ashley. Or is it for this one? Yeah, it's OK. 
so two years in, right? We had a, a slide, but you know, we, we plan and the universe laughs. Um, you know, where are we, right? So lessons learned to date, really investing in that data literacy, right? Not framing data collection as something, again, I started with we don't do to, right? We act with. So really building the capacity of our teachers and our administrators, you know, in our direct service locations to understand data through rich data dialogue. I think the other thing we're finding is the, uh, the J curve, right? You get a little worse before you get better, right? And then mindset shifts. So this is a long game, right? I'm not interested in the class score, right? It's great, you can get bragging rights, but what are the outcomes for children, right? It's about transforming practices and using class as a tool to do that. Ashley, anything you would add? Yeah, I think the biggest, the biggest thing that we know is that um, when you're implementing a professional learning system and you're really launching all of these things concurrently, that it does take time and there is a certain amount of trusting the process that you have to ask yourself and others to go on. And so you'll notice that we didn't show you our class scores today, although we're happy to if you want to talk about those or our back end processes. Um, really, it's about how are we bringing this to life for children every day and how are we making that clear connection between what can sometimes be so hard. We were talking about it earlier. Teachers feel overwhelmed, they feel frustrated. Those of us who are working with class all the time, that can be hard because we may love it, we may see it in the workplace every day um, and be really um, passionate about what, that, what those numbers look like and what the data is telling us, but really it's about the mindset of how people feel during the process. So that is something that we've really anchored in. It's why our professional learning community videos are all about the children and all about celebrating what the teachers are bringing to life, even if it's not always perfect pra practice. So we're trying to make it public not perfect. So I think that that's, that's really it. Thank you for hearing our case study.